Today's brief has been created with open source information readily available on the internet as well as books. However, take it with a pinch of salt because some aspects have been kept secret due to said country's official secrets act. And sometimes Wikipedia is probably the best place to find the information. So sit back, relax, and let's get into today's briefing. During the 1990s, the Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force started to revolutionize their surface fleet, following along the lines of the American Navy. America, at this point, would be starting to put into commission the Arleigh Burke-class guided missile destroyers, which utilized the new Aegis combat system. This system would help the Japanese track airborne Tu-22 backfires armed with the anti-ship cruise missile AS-4 Kitchen, which would be flying off the mainland towards Japan, a major ally of that of the Americans at the tail end of the Cold War. This is not something that the Japanese fleet at the time of 1985 could actually do, and so the Japanese would design a ship along these lines to construct using the Aegis system and following along the lines of an Arleigh Burke. Design would start in the mid-1980s for four new vessels, designated as the Congor class destroyer. These vessels would be 7,500 tons as standard and rising to about 9,500 tons at full displacement. They would be 161 meters long, have a beam of 21 meters, and sit 6.2 meters in the water. Their propulsion system would be four General Electric gas turbines, powering two shafts for up to 30 knots. Range would be about 3,000 nautical miles at 20 knots, enough to reach the other side of the Pacific, but would need to replenish after about 10 to 14 days to replenish the food for her 300 crew. The radars would be the reason this ship was actually built, and they would sport four Planier AN SBY-1 Delta Foxtrot band multifunctional radars, one per side of the forward superstructure. One JOPS-28 Charlie, Charlie band surface search radar located just above the navigational radar on the mast. One JOPS-20 India band navigational radar. Three AN SPG-62 India slash Juliet band fire control radars. OQS-102 Barrand sonar and OQR-1 Toad Array sonar. Being an Aegis-capable ship, they will have a similar complement to that of an Arleigh Burke-class guided missile destroyer. And these would be eight Harpoon Block 1 Delta anti-ship missiles located amidships cross-firing between the funnels. These missiles have a kill line of about 173 nautical miles and have a speed of about Mark 0.8. 90 Mark 41 vertical launch silos for SM2 MR surface to air missile, capable of doing about Mark 3.5 and shooting targets out to about 40 nautical miles. SM3 anti ballistic missile missile, capable of firing at ballistic missiles out to 550 nautical miles at Mark 10. Aserok VL ASW missile system, capable of placing a torpedo in the water at 11.8 nautical miles away from the ship flying about Mark 1. One 5-inch 54 caliber Otto Brada main gun, capable of firing a shell at about 40 rounds per minute out to 16.2 nautical miles. Two 20mm Phalanx close-in weapon systems, capable of firing out to 0.8 nautical miles at 75 rounds a second. Two triple 12.75-inch ASW torpedoes, capable of taking the Mark 46 or Type 73 torpedo, and finally, they have a flight deck for an SH-60, but no hangar. So with all the weapons and radars chosen, it was now time to order the ships. The ships would be given the building numbers 2313 to 2316, and will be ordered from the Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, with the first ship being laid down on May 8th, 1990, launching in late September 1991, and commissioning in late 1993, being named the Japanese ship Kongo. Hull 2 would be laid down on April 7th, 1992, taking one and a half years to launch and commissioning on March 15th, 1995 as the Japanese ship Kirishima. Hull 3 would be laid down on April 8th, 1993, taking about a year and a half again to launch and commissioning on March 14th, 1996 as the Japanese ship Miyoko. Hull 4 would be the last hull, being laid down on May 19th, 1995, and taking one year and three months to launch, commissioning on March 20th, 1998, as the Japanese ship Shokai. 
The first two ships will be named after the two Congo-class battlecruisers from pre-World War I, and the last two will be named after heavy cruisers of the Mayoko and Hayokao class of the interwar era. Upon commissioning, Congo would sail for first of class trials, as well as sailing for Hawaii for Aegis calibration trials, as well as participating in RIMPAC in the latter half of 1994. The latter ships of the class would sail for Hawaii as and when they joined the fleet for Aegis calibration trials. Over the next few years of the 1990s, the Congos and the ship following on would enter service and they would conduct patrols around the islands of Japan, occasionally enter the South China Sea and in the areas around Hawaii, operating with the American Navy. By 2000, Congo would sail with a major Japanese maritime self-defence force, consisting of the destroyers Kamara, Shimakaze, Murasame, Harasame, Yadachi, Kurasame, Ashigari, support ship Hamana, and a submarine. Congo would prove to be an excellent anti-air warfare destroyer in simulated air attacks during this time at sea. In 2001, Shokai would sail for her first deployment with the destroyers Hiei and Samadare, spending four months with the task group before heading back to port by August. By 2003, Congo and Kirishima would sail for the Indian Ocean as part of a US task group, engaged in operations as part of the War on Terror, operating in the Indian Ocean and getting very close to the Persian Gulf. The two ships would return to the same place in 2004 for some of the same operations. Shokai would sail for the Indian Ocean alongside the destroyer Anami, but would return in March 2005. November 2006 would see Congo dry docked for operations to take the SM3 Block 1 Alpha system, taking about six months for her to rejoin the fleet. Upon rejoining, she sailed for Hawaii for ballistic missile defence tests, which she passed in 2008. Over the period of about three years, from 2007 to 2010, Congo, Kirishima, Miyoko, and Shokai would undertake the same refits and tests, all passing being the first destroyers in the Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force to have the ballistic missile defense capability. However, the latter ship would take a little bit longer due to one of her missiles malfunctioning in her altitude and guidance systems. In 2011, most of the class would be involved in the relief efforts for the 2011 tsunami and earthquake, providing disaster relief to the area. A year later, the class would be deployed to the western side of mainland Japan due to North Korea launching a satellite into space. But as this missile did not enter the Japanese airspace, the ships would be recalled. And in 2013, Congo would be deployed again to the missile defense area due to North Korea, ironically enough, launching another missile. However, this one also did not violate Japanese airspace. Over the next few years, Shokai would take part in the RIMPAC with the helicopter destroyer Hayuga, where she would prove to be a very excellent anti-air warfare destroyer similar to that of her sister ship Congo. She returned to Japan after a few months at being at sea. In 2019, Mayoko would have the first female captain and Chokai would sail with the Shimakaze, sailing off the coast of Yokosuka for a joint naval exercise with Canada. Current open source intelligence suggests that all four ships are active in service with the Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force and are currently doing operations off the coast of Japan. So that's it guys, thank you very much for watching, hope you learned something new. Don't forget to like the video before you leave, leave a comment and uh, give a suggestion of what you think I should do next, as well as if you have a question you want me to answer, please put it in the comment section on the pinned post. Apart from that, if you haven't uh, subscribed to the channel, I recommend doing so because I have some very interesting content coming out very soon. If you want to support the channel, there is a Patreon page, but that's entirely up to you. If you do so, there is some interesting perks to actually being a Patreon to the page. Apart from that, all you need to do is say thank you very much, have a nice day, and uh, here's a sneak peek at uh, next week's video.